Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home this 8,000 watt Gentron generator. This one was listed on Facebook Marketplace for $150. And according to the listing, the engine will run for a second on starting fluid and that's pretty much it. The prior owner, he did swap out the spark plug, the air filter, and even put a new carburetor on it, but it's not running any better. So we put it up for sale only asking $150. Now, as you can tell, probably by looking at it, it's in decent shape, but it's been well used. The handle here is, for some reason, down there. And the wheels, although I wouldn't say they're missing, but they're definitely broken. This is all that's left is the hub on the wheel. So this one's gonna be a little challenging to get off of here. So I might use my tractor and just lift it off and drop it onto a furniture dolly. Now, assuming we get this running, there are going to be issues to deal with besides the wheels. The battery, of course, is dead and we're missing the fuel cap. So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. But the fact that it runs on starting fluid tells me it's most likely fuel or spark. And potentially just sitting at this angle is enough to trip that oil sensor. So that could be it, but I can see there are some disconnected wires here. So most likely that has already been bypassed and still no joy. Also, I guess fuel would be suspect. If there's water in that tank, whether it was the old carburetor or the new, that would prevent this from running or potentially there's an obstruction in that fuel line. I'm not sure, but that's what we're going to find out. So let's get this off the trailer. We'll get it inside and figure it out.
I'm actually going to start with the battery today. I kind of hurt my back and the idea of pulling the engine over right now doesn't sound too good. So I've had it on the charger for a few hours at this point and I don't think it's taking a charge. I'm just going to hook up this light and unplug the charger and you can see that light immediately goes out. So yeah, battery, it has to be replaced. I actually don't have the correct battery dimensionally, but I do have one that I can use for now. So let's get this one out. We'll temporarily put one in its place and move on. Check the oil real quick. Plenty of oil, it's right to the top. Needs to be changed, but we'll worry about that later. So I'm just taking a quick look at the wires here, trying to figure out what's been bypassed. And the first one is this red wire. It goes up to the control panel, and usually that goes to the low oil light which is right there. And the other side of the red wire, which is right here, goes to the oil module, which it does through this connector right to the module. So there's really no reason to have that unplugged, but it shouldn't hurt anything. The other one is the yellow wire. This also goes into the oil module. And I don't see any other unplugged wires. The yellow wire coming from the engine, that is the low oil switch. And that is supposed to go right into the low oil module, but it's not. Instead, it's connected to this black wire, which I think runs over to kill spark right to the ignition coil. So that should not be connected directly for a couple reasons. First, the low oil module provides a delay so when it senses low oil, it doesn't shut down right away. And once it does start to shut down, this will kind of latch the shutdown so that it completes. You know, if you're connected directly to the switch, you could momentarily trip the switch just because the oil is splashing around, but you're not actually low on oil. So connecting it like this will definitely cause an issue like the person reported. And I've also heard that this will pass a lot of current through the switch in the engine and could damage that switch internally. So I would not recommend this, but for now, I'm gonna leave these wires like this. I know it's been run like this unsuccessfully. At least that's what I'm told. So let's just try turning it over like this and see what we get. The fuel in the tank, smells good and it doesn't look bad in there either so yeah let's just crank the engine a few times see if we get any signs of life All right, this one could be an easy fix. 
I cranked the engine over, it started for a second, then stalled. And once it did, I could hear a hissing sound coming from the generator. So I turned it over again, the engine did not start, and after turning it over, I could hear that hissing sound again. And I think it was coming from the exhaust. So the exhaust, it is building pressure. It's obstructed. Most likely it is the spark arrester. So let me set you up right here. I'll crank the engine again a few times just so you can hear what I just heard. I hope you heard that. It's definitely building pressure, and I even saw some carbon coming out. Now, the engine, it did try to start again. I didn't shut it down. It just kind of stalled out on its own. So there is a screw right there holding the screen in, but I can't get to it with this panel on. So I'm going to get these bolts out, pull this cover off, and that should allow access to that spark arrester. Wow, not sure how that happened. But you can see there's a bunch of carbon here blocking it up. And the whole thing is broken in half. So yeah, that's, that's not gonna do anything useful. So I guess we'll leave this off for now. We'll try restarting it. Have a feeling it's gonna blow a lot of carbon out. But let's see if it'll start and stay running. Okay, good. I wasn't sure it was going to start there for a second. It was just kind of spitting and sputtering, and then it took off. The engine sounds good, and we have power. It's at 121 volts, a little over 62 hertz. So I want to restart it again, see if it starts any better now that the exhaust is cleared out a bit. So we'll give that a try real quick, and if it still doesn't start well, we'll try putting these wires back to where they should be and try it one more time. It almost sounds like weak spark, and the way it's wired could definitely cause that. I know the previous owner also switched out the plug, so maybe it's gapped wrong or just the wrong plug altogether. But let's just try restarting it one more time like this and see if it goes any better. Okay, good. It started up just fine that time. So I'm going to connect those wires to where I think they should be, and then we'll try it again. All right, so let's get a better look here. I guess first off, I'll plug the red in, which is the low oil light in the control panel. And the yellow wire coming from the oil module is... This one here. So the switch from the engine should be connected to that. And 
And then what does that leave? We do have one here that's unaccounted for. It goes to the ignition coil to kill spark. But we already have two wires connected here. One of them should be from the switch up above and the other one, the low oil module, which it looks like it is. This wire here, this black one goes through the sleeve to the module, so that is good. And then the other black wire goes up here to the control panel, so that should be for that. So this may not be used, which is fine. So let's try it like this. They don't all have to be basket cases. And this one isn't that bad. I mean, it's now running. The engine sounds good and the power head is doing what it should. So all things considered, I mean, that's pretty good. If either of those aren't working right, then you've got a problem. But in this case, the core is good. Granted, everything kind of outside of the core needs a bit of work. So despite the part list I made earlier, I'm gonna to have to add a spark arrestor to the list and maybe an hour meter as well. I did not see that turn on. Also, the fuel petcock is broken and the handle right there. And it's also leaking a little bit. So I wanna get the fuel out of there and I wanna leave that in there if it's gonna potentially leak all over the place. And yeah, maybe an oil change. I think it's earned it already. Yeah, it looks like this one's gonna make a bit of a mess. So I'm gonna use this Forma funnel to just kind of direct the oil down there into the pan. I just topped off that engine with some new oil. So I'm gonna clean up this mess and move on to getting the fuel out of that tank. The guy I bought this from, he also said he replaced the fuel filter in his troubleshooting. And yeah, this is not the right filter. This is a paper filter and it's for a fuel pump type system, not a gravity fed like this. And the issue is is that once the filter becomes a little clogged, it becomes really restrictive. And the gravity-fed systems, they don't produce enough pressure to really push through that. So this filter should be replaced and probably eliminated because the fuel petcock actually has a fuel screen in the tank. So this is not really necessary. But if you do want to add a filter, it should be something like this. There's just a screen in here, there's no paper. So it doesn't do a good job filtering, but for a gravity fed system, that's really the only thing you can use. Anyway, let's try to get this off without making a huge mess here. All right, the fuel is off. This generator, it also uses 3 16 fuel line, but the filter is a quarter inch, and you can see it's all stretched out, trying to fit onto this filter. So if there was any question, it definitely needs to be eliminated. The fuel lines are also quite petrified, so I'm just gonna cut the filter out. We'll hook up a temporary line and run it down to a bottle. This is just an adapter from 3 16 to quarter inch. But 
that line. It's pretty petrified. Yeah, I just gotta pull that line off. Anyway, you get the idea. It's been about 15 minutes. Probably got another 15 to go. So I'm gonna pause it here and we'll continue in a second. The parts have been ordered and with any luck, they'll be here in a few days. But there was one part I couldn't find. And oddly enough, that was the spark arrester. The manufacturer does not sell this part. And I checked on the secondary market for any that are compatible with this exhaust system and I did not find any. So yeah, potentially I might have to reuse this piece right here. You know, it does offer some protection, but ideally I'd be able to find a new one of these. You know, either way, I'm gonna leave this uninstalled for a while. I want the rest of that carbon to blow out of that exhaust so it doesn't just clog up again. I also have a replacement petcock for this tank. So I do wanna get the tank unmounted from the frame, we'll flip it upside down, get a new one installed. And then lastly, the carburetor. This one, I noticed the bowl was wet when draining the tank. So I think there is an issue in here, either there's a bad seal or maybe the needle and seat aren't playing nice. And that got me looking closer at this carburetor. And I actually think this is the original carburetor. The other one that came with this generator looks a lot cleaner. So potentially I'll swap them out, but I would like to stick with the one original to the machine if possible. So we'll get that off, get it up on the bench and get a closer look. When lifting the tank off, I could hear something kind of moving around in there. And it looks like there is part of a fuel spout for a gas can. So let's try to fish that out of there. Interesting. So this is the new fuel petcock I have. They are pretty universal. There's usually only two types. So I'm hoping that it's compatible with this fuel tank. sure what that is.
And that's it for now. Theoretically, that should be sorted, but we do still need the fuel cap. Anyway, I'm going to leave the tank off for now. I do need to clean this up a bit at some point. And I also ordered that new hour meter, so I will need access to the back side of that control panel. So let's get that carburetor uninstalled. These bolts are pretty corroded, a lot of aluminum oxide on them. So I don't know if he actually swapped the carburetor out like he said, because I would have expected some of that to be kind of brushed off just by touching it or removing those nuts. Anyway, let's uh, have a look. Yeah, maybe they have been off. They were pretty loose. And there should be a nut right there holding the box to that bracket, which is also missing. Yeah, that's why it was leaking. The bowl isn't even tight. So, should be an easy fix. If I can get it off. All right, let's see what we have going on in here. Not expecting much since it was running the engine well. Biggest issue is the bowl being loose, hopefully. Yeah, a little dirty. Not bad, though. Actually very clean. Main jet's in there. We'll get that out. And the pilot's under there. So we'll pull that as well. The insulator, sometimes it does come with the carburetor. You know, in this case, it actually ripped the gasket. So we'll need a new one of those. We'll clean that off in a bit. But right, let's get the, the main jet and the pilot jet out. That's the main jet and the emulsion tube should come out as well. There it is. This is the idle set screw. This generator does not idle, so you only need it to poke through a few threads. This actually might be a little more than necessary, but you just don't want it influencing the engine speed. The governor should take care of that. That's it. That's everything that comes out of here. So I'm just going to run through the passages real quick, make sure they're clear. Soak it for a few minutes in the ultrasonic 
just to make sure and we'll put it together, throw it back on the machine. That's pretty much it. Overall, this carburetor is very clean and really doesn't need to go in the ultrasonic, but I've already got it warmed up, got it taken apart. So we'll let it soak. Cleaned up pretty well. Not that it was that dirty to begin with. So let's get the emulsion tube in, in the main jet. Pilot jet next. Make sure it seats all the way down, which it did. This piece just helps bridge the gap up to the idle set screw, and that holds down the jet. And we'll turn this in until we see a few threads poke through. And that's it. should be good and then the fuel solenoid the wires exit to the right when the choke is facing forward so you want to orient it in such a way that the wires head out in the right direction and there's actually an o-ring here which is missing So, yeah, that's a problem. We can't use it without the O-ring or it's going to leak. So let me steal one from another carburetor. Let's see if this one has a good O-ring. Wow. Yeah, and this one has the missing O-ring. So I'm just going to use this entire thing, 
Physically, it looks newer and seems to be in good shape. Can't forget the drain plug. That should do it. Put a new gasket between the engine and the insulator. Yeah, it looks like this clip is damaged. Let me see if I have any others. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have another clip, so I just have to use a zip tie. This cover isn't really making a good seal. So I have another one. Let me just try that real quick, see if it's any better. Yeah, that seems a lot better. It's missing a bolt. Most of the parts showed up today. I got some grips from Amazon to replace the missing grip here and a matching one to throw over there. We also got the fuel cap and the hour meter, the wheels and the battery. So let's start easy. We'll try out that fuel cap, see if it fits. So 
So hopefully this cap fits. You know, luckily the company that makes this generator supplies most of the parts. Otherwise I'd probably be out of luck because I've never seen a cap like this before on any other generator. But it looks like it is the right size, which is good. So I think we're in business here. Attach this one so it won't get lost. The wheels I ordered for this were from Amazon. They're three quarter inch inner diameter, which is exactly what this is, but this most likely is metric, so I'm not completely convinced that these wheels are going to fit. Hopefully they do. So close. Let me try sanding this a bit. I think if I take a little bit of paint off, it might just fit. Beautiful. I think we just need a spacer on the back side, and that should be good. I actually don't have a spacer, so I'll have to make a trip to the store. But let's reuse the washer on the outside. It was pretty mangled, so let's just flatten it out. Hopefully this goes a little bit better. I'm gonna try compressed air just between the pipe and the grip. If you get it just right, it creates a pocket of air and allows it to slide on. Right now we're about, yeah, about halfway See if this one works any better.
wasn't paying attention when I put this on, put it in the wrong hole. It should actually go right about there. Much better. We're making progress. At least that furniture dolly, it's been eliminated. I would say the tank's 100%. So are the handles. The wheels aren't far behind. These are a bit more narrow, so I do want to add a spacer to them, but I need to make a trip to the store to get that. But now that it's supporting itself, I can see that the foot under the stator, it is bent a bit. So that does need to be straightened out before it causes any damage to the rail that supports that stator. So let's get that off next. We'll fix that up and then move on. It looks like the worst of the damage is over here. It is blown out on the rail and we're missing a bolt right there, actually on both sides. So let's get the two remaining bolts out and just see how bad the damage is. not that far off so maybe it is the rail but that one this side here might be a little low that side looks pretty good so let's adjust that a little bit Yeah, let's give that a try. Yeah, unfortunately, straightening the bracket made absolutely no difference. The issue is not the bracket. It's the rail, or specifically this blown out hole right there. It is creating a ridge on the bottom. You can kind of just see it right there. And it's not a huge ridge, but it's enough to adjust the angle of this bracket to make it the way that it is. So the correct way to fix this really would be to repair the rail. But in order to do that, you really need to uninstall everything to get the needed access. So in this case, I am not gonna do that. I think the three good mounting points are fine. And usually these are only held on with one bolt on each side. So this one is a little overkill. I don't think that is gonna be a big issue. So what I'm going to do is just use some washers on the underside as a spacer underneath the hole in the front here. That should correct the lean and straighten out that foot.
pretty good. I wouldn't say perfect, but considering where we started, that is almost perfect. So I'm going to call that good enough. And I think we'll move on, get that battery swapped out. As far as the spark arrestor goes, have an idea on how to fix this, which is better than the alternative, which is basically nothing. Amazon did have a spark arrestor, which clearly is not the right size, but it's a nice cone shape. So if I just put it in until it stops, I should be able to cut that off, leaving a pretty good sized cone. I mean, the original spark arrestor was quite small. So this would be a lot larger, have a lot more surface area. And I think if I push it in just a little bit, it'll make it nice and snug. And this piece here actually is tapered a little bit toward the end. So I might even be able to put the cone on there just a bit to help hold it in place and then install it just like that. All right, let's see if this fits. Fits pretty good. Probably should have left it a touch longer to give it a little more tension, but I think this will be okay, especially when I put it on here. This is actually tapered. So the further I push it on, the tighter it gets. And it's on there pretty good. I think once I put it in here, it's going to sandwich it between the pipe and this piece right here and just hold it in place. Not that it's going to go anywhere. I mean, the pressure is going to be coming out this way. And this pipe actually goes in pretty far, so it's not... It's not like it's just going to fall down in the exhaust. It's going to stay in that pipe. So I think this will work out fine. Anyway, I'm going to leave it off for now. I do want to run this a few more times just to get any more loose carbon out of there. The last big thing here is the hour counter. So in order to install it, I need to get the back panel off. And there is a quick disconnect here, so I may not need to use this wiring harness with any luck. I can just unplug the old one and put the new one in its place.
And then six more screws and that panel should lift up just enough with any luck. A lot of times I don't bother replacing these hour meters, especially on Generacs. They always stop working after about 10 years and Generac wants about $40 for their hour meter. This one only costs 13 bucks, so why not? This hour meter, it is completely different. On the back of it, there are two terminals and each terminal has two wires each. Although physically, I think they're interchangeable. You know, I don't think they are compatible. This one does not have the terminals. It just has the quick disconnect. And the wires are the same color, which tells me this is expecting AC input. But this one has what looks to be a red wire on the right and a black wire on the left. So that tells me this is most likely DC. And it's also in the DC block. So I don't think these are interchangeable. So I'm just going to close this back up and get it reinstalled. You can see these wheels, they're right up against the frame. So I ended up cutting a couple pieces of PVC pipe, which fits on this axle just fine. and will give a decent space. And that is the closest they can get now. So we'll do the same to the other side. think I'm ready to go. I've got the test tank hooked up and a 6,000 watt load on standby. So I'm gonna get this started and while it's warming up, I'm gonna tap the exhaust a bit with a hammer. I just wanna dislodge any loose carbon. And once that's done, we'll try 6,000 watts and see how it does.
Not too bad, it started right up. It did hesitate a little, like it did when I first got it. So that tells me there is still some buildup in that exhaust. Hitting it with the hammer did not get any additional out. Putting it under a 6,000 watt load did. When I turned the last space heater on, I did see a bunch of carbon blow out of that exhaust. So I don't know if it's clear yet. I think I'm gonna leave that spark arrestor off a little longer, run it a little more and just make sure everything is clean. The engine, the generator are doing well. Uh, without a load, we were fast at 64 Hertz. So I brought that down to 61 and a half, loaded it to 6,000 Watts and things held pretty well. It was at 57.5 Hertz. Technically anything above 57 is fine. I like to keep them above 58. So I did increase the spring tension a bit, brought it to 58 Hertz under a 6,000 Watt load. And then I took the load off and just double checked things and we were at 61.7 Hertz. So that, is fine you know this generator was actually in pretty good condition it didn't really need anything other than a bunch of maintenance you know spark arresters they do clog up they should be checked once in a while and of course this was missing a lot of parts it had a bad battery a leaking fuel valve and no wheels you know why i don't know but that stuff is fixed now so i actually think i'm going to wrap the video here i do want to run it longer i don't want to bore you with that and once all the carbon's out, I'll just get that spark arrestor and the rest of the heat shield in place. And this thing will be 100%. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching. All right, not quite done yet. I did pull the plug out. It wasn't sitting well that it was still starting a little odd. And what I found, I think, explains the issue. I mean, this is a name brand plug, but if you look at the gap, it is absolutely massive. It is twice what it should be, if not more. And that would cause hard starting for sure. So I'm gonna close that up, get it back in. We'll try starting it one more time, and make sure things go a little better. Let's see where this plug is at. Should be just below 30. We're at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. about 75 thousandths that's way too much so i'm gonna close this up a bit we'll try it out again yeah that's a lot better That was it, it started a lot better. So I think I am gonna get that spark arrestor installed. So the question in my mind is which problem came first, the plug or the spark arrestor? That plug, I don't think was original to that machine, and it looked pretty clean, pretty new. So I'm thinking someone swapped that out when the engine started running poorly, and they just made the issue worse. So now, I'm done.